Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're rejoicing. We're glad about it. And every Sunday morning, I'm so grateful to God for another day and another week that he has afforded us the privilege to worship him. And I'm grateful for all of you who've joined us and have come and, uh, and are participating with us wherever you are in the country, in the world. I want to give a shout out to our military families and to our members who are traveling, who still stay connected. I want to give a shout out to the college students who join us every week all over the country. I'm so blessed and so honored that you choose to join us. I've got a series I'm beginning today that I think is critical for every person's life. It is about Jonah, the servant of God, the, the prophet of God who decided to disobey God. And it's going to be a four-part series, and we're going to start today with part one. So open your Bibles to the book of Jonah. And we believe it's going to be a blessing to you. I'm going to also give a shout out to all of the people all over the country who voted for the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden with the Steve Harvey uh, Neighborhood Awards, also known as the Hoodies. For the sixth time in seven years, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden won the Hoodies, the best church. Uh, and I'm honored that people all over the country think so much about us that they would cast their vote. And I want to give you a shout out and a thanks. So God bless everybody. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Be blessed. All righty, you can be seated. Grab your Bibles. Open up to the book of Jonah, page 812 in my Bible. I want to start a series today that I'm going to be in for the next several weeks. I want to talk about Jonah. Somebody holler, say Jonah. I want to talk about Jonah. What I want to talk about, most of you know the story of Jonah, who's a person who God gave instructions to, and Jonah did not follow those instructions. He went in the opposite direction of what God told him to do, and it put him in a jam. It put him in a predicament. Somebody say predicament. Yeah. Say that again, predicament. Yeah. One last time, everybody, predicament. Yeah. That's what this subject for today, part one is, is predicament. I'm, look, I'm preaching from Joshua chapter one, the whole chapter. Jonah. I just was trying to see if y'all was making paying attention. I'm sorry. I keep been say, I keep saying that every all day today. But if I say Joshua, I mean Jonah. I mean Jonah. I want to talk about this guy because God teaches us a valuable lesson through the life of Jonah, through this this situation in Jonah's life. And I want you to listen very carefully. I want you to hear this word because God's. This is a word that God has for somebody today. I tossed. Not all, I tossed last night. I woke up this morning. I wasn't sure. And when I woke up this morning, God said, "Yep, I want you to talk about Jonah." There's seven points to this message. The first one is God's assignment to Jonah. God gave Jonah an assignment. And that's what verses 1 through 2 says. 1 and 2 is his assignment. Let me read this to you. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. God said to Jonah, I've seen the wickedness of Nineveh, and I want you to go there and proclaim this, proclaim the, and pre preach to them and proclaim to them that I've seen their behavior. God gives an assignment to Jonah. I wanted to talk about this because every person in here has an assignment from God. If you've accepted the Lord Jesus in your life, if you've called him your Lord, if you've surrendered your life to him, he has an assignment for you and he's spoken it to you. God spoke to Jonah and gave him the assignment and, and here's what I know what God does. God will communicate his assignment to you through whatever means by which you understand that he communicates to you. He don't want you to feel like you have to guess and figure out where it is. That's not how God works. It's not hidden so that you can't find it. He has spoken and communicated an assignment to you, and he spoke and he gave an assignment to Jonah, and Jonah, unfortunately, did not carry out the assignment. Now, I, I want to point out this thing because it's very important. I, I want to point out that you have an assignment. Look at your neighbor and say, you got an assignment. Now, most people, 
Jonah, we don't, we, don't, we don't have a lot of information about Jonah. We don't know everything about him. All we know is that he had a prophetic call on his life. Most of you put the assignment for ministry in the category for ministers. But it's important that you understand whether you are licensed or not, you have a ministry that God has given to your life for you to do. I don't care how jacked up you are, how tore up you are, how messed up you are, I don't care how much you sin, God has put an assignment in your hands. Everybody has an assignment. Everybody has an assignment. Everybody has an assignment. You got one. Point two is Jonah's avoidance of that assignment. Somebody say Jonah avoided it. He wanted to avoid it, avoidance. That's point two, Jonah avoid, he wanted to avoid it, and that's in verse three. It says in verse three that Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Oh man, this is so important to hear and understand. Jonah somehow thought that if he could get in a ship and go to Tarshish, that somehow he could avoid the assignment that God gave to him. Some of y'all think if you get in a plane and go to another part of the country or to another country that you somehow have escaped the assignment of God. You cannot get on a ship, a boat, a car and escape the assignment of God. Matter of fact, here's what the Bible says in Romans. The gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. You know what that means? That means that once God gives you an assignment, once he has determined to give you an assignment, he will never take it back. Now I need to talk about that because the devil wants you to think that because you lied or because you committed adultery or because you stole or because you got drunk or because you got high or because, what else y'all be doing? Because you went to the club. <laughs> He wants you to think that once you do those things, that somehow or another, your assignment is pulled back. But God knew you were gonna do those things before he gave you the assignment. Ooh, I should have got a few more amens on that point. Because especially from this 12 o'clock crowd with all the sin y'all got going up in here, all this stuff. He never takes it back. That's great news. God knows your weaknesses and your shortcomings. But once he gave you the assignment, he never takes it back. And, 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 and Jonah somehow, matter of fact, he crazy because he thinking right here in verse number three, he, got, he, he went to flee the Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Ain't that crazy? He thought that if he went to Tarshish, he would, he would escape God. Y'all need to know you can't escape God. Wherever you go and when you get there, God will already be there. If you go to Florida, he's already there. If you go to California, he's already there. If you go to another country, he's already there. If you go to the club, he at the club when you get to the club. It doesn't matter how dark the room gets. It doesn't matter where you go and what you do. When you get there, God's already there. And twice in the text, it says he somehow thought he could escape the presence of God. You cannot escape the presence of God. He thought he could. And so he thought he'd be, matter of fact, he got on the ship. He was told to go to the northwest. He went to the northeast. He went to the west. He went in the opposite direction and he went down. Anytime you go in the opposite direction, you might be traveling north, but when you don't go to where God's telling you, you're going down. It says in the text, he went down the Joppa. Matter of fact, it says twice he went down. He went down the Joppa and he went down into the ship. Either way, it's going down. Somebody say, you're going in the wrong direction. You can't avoid the assignment of God. You cannot avoid it. Now, why am I saying this? Because Jonah found himself in point three having to experience God's first actions. Somebody say God's first actions. 
Tell your neighbor, if there's a first action, that means, there, that means there's a second action. So in verse 4, because of his disobedience and because he's trying to escape from God and because he's trying to not do what God wants him to do, he gets this ticket, boards the ship, heads toward Tarshish, he's trying to avoid Nineveh, and then in verse 4 says, look at verse 4, but the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken up. Let me put it in today's language. The ship was about to be broke up. <laughs> the scripture says, the Lord sent a great wind. I need to say that because some of y'all are experiencing drama in your life and pain and everything's out of order and everything's out of control and everything is problematic and you got drama and you blame it on the devil, everything that comes into your life is not from the devil. I think about 17 people clapped on that point right there because um, there's a lot of stuff that we're blaming on the devil that really God created. And verse 4 says, the Lord sent out a great wind. Here this man's got turmoil. He's on board a ship, and there's turmoil in his life. And he, the turmoil is there because he has disobeyed God. Now, I, don't know, I know y'all don't like this kind of preaching, but I, this... I don't know who this is for, but I know you're here. It might be one person that made all the other 4,000 of y'all have to sit through this and experience this. And, and I just hope that one person get it straight and get their right life right so everybody else don't have to take this whipping along with you. Because God gave you some instructions and you didn't do what God told you to do. Now your whole family's in drama. Now everything's back, back, jacked up and everybody's going through hell because of you. Because you choose not to obey and do what God told you to do. So now the whole ship is in turmoil. Everybody is, is the ship is being tossed to and so fro. And the thing is so vicious that the scripture says that the ship is about to break up. And families and problems and jobs and careers and stuff is about to go down the drain because one joker dishonored Many of you are in that situation right now. But here's point four. Now listen carefully, y'all. This is y'all not gonna shout on this message, but if you just get the message and you learn what I'm trying to tell you, it's gonna make a difference in your life. Here's point four. I want to talk about the sailors' attempts to assist him. There's some sailors on the ship who try to help him out. Now this is important because some of y'all are in trouble because you're trying to help somebody else out. Thank you. You got to be careful who you try to help out because when you try to help somebody out, out who's in trouble with God, you get your own self in trouble. Mm. I had to learn the hard way by me trying to be Mr. Nice Man, trying to be Mr. Kind Person that I'm helping everybody, that I'm really getting in God's way. And when you get in God's way, you got to get the whipping too that everybody else has to get. And these guys on the ship trying to help, they trying to help Jonah out. They don't know Jonah is the issue, but they know somebody on the ship has created a problem. And so here's what the text says. This point is verses 5 through 11. Can I read verses 5 through 11? Can I read verse 5 through 11? Then, verse 5 through 11, then the mariners were afraid. That's the sailors. And every man cried out to his God. Every man cried out to his God. And they, here's what they did. And threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. <laughs> the ship is being tossed and they say we got to lighten this load this ship is going to be torn apart so they start throwing stuff overboard but Jonah had gone down into the lowest part of the ship had lain down and was fast asleep he, everybody else is upstairs trying to save the ship trying to live he downstairs in the belly of the ship sleep some of y'all have lived through the experience of life where every, you trying to pay the bills, you're trying to put food on the table, and here's the one joker who won't get the job down in the basement watching TV. Everybody 
everybody else working, everybody else trying to put food on the table, everybody else trying to keep everything alive, everybody else trying to keep this thing together, and the one person who is the cause of the whole drama is got his, got his, oh, Jesus. Don't go to sleep, dude. <laughs> he got his arms stretched out, his eyes closed. I'm coming, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I'm not going to let you sleep on my ship. There you go. Somebody tell your neighbor, don't fall asleep on the pastor's ship. Now, here they, they want to help him out. He downstairs sleep. And they're throwing stuff overboard. He the cause, Jonah's the cause, and they are throwing good stuff overboard. Some of y'all are giving good money after situations that is not going to change the situation. It is not going to change the situation because throwing... <laughs> let, me, let me go on. I, 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 Jesus help me. Somebody say, Lord help him, Lord help him. Lord. He down in the basement sleep. He down in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, the belly of the ship. Verse 6, so the captain came to him and said to him, what do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps you, your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, listen to this, verse 7, come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Here they say, they, they were smart enough to discern that the reason for this situation is because somebody on this ship has made God upset. Some of y'all got some people in your life that you better recognize they're the reason for the drama in your life. And so they cast lots and when they, when they threw the dice, it spelled out Jonah's name. Then they said to him, verse 8, are y'all still with me right here? Yeah. Then they said to him, please tell us for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? Look, listen to verse 9. Look at verse 9. Are y'all with me? Are y'all following me here? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord. Really? The God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. You know how they knew it? Because he told them. Then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. It wasn't getting any lighter. I'm almost finished. Are y'all with me? Have I lost you? It wasn't getting any lighter. Some of y'all, the situation's not getting any better, but you are insisting on keeping the Jonas in your life who have caused the drama in the first place. You working and working and trying to make it stay alive and trying to make it keep going and trying to make the relationship work and trying to make this do this and yet they are the cause of the drama in the first place. Now he know he the problem. Here's point five. So they trying to help him verse point four. They're trying to assist him. They question him. He realizes he's the problem. They realize it. And they ask him, what do they have to do? Verse 12 is his answer, Jonah's answer. Verse no, point 5. And he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. Now, I got a problem here. Why are you trying to get somebody else to do something that you can do yourself? Let me let that sink in because there's always somebody waiting for you to do something that they should be able to do for themselves. 
I'm sick of people waiting on everybody else to help fix their problems. You gotta learn how to do what you, you know what the problem is, you know you're the culprit, you know you're the reason this is going on, you waiting on somebody to give you a job, go make a job, go create a job, go start a job, make a business, stop waiting on somebody else to bring you out. And he up here talking about, y'all yeah, throw, me, throw me overboard. Here's point six, I'm almost finished, I'm coming to a close. The sailors versus Verses 13 through 16, the sailors' actions. They finally act. Verse 13, nevertheless, the men rowed hard to return to land, but they could not. For the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. They kept trying to make it work. They rowing hard, trying to get back to land. They couldn't because the sea was vicious. That's those of you who don't, you, you know what the problem is. You know, you know you got something going on in your life. You know you're in some relationship you shouldn't be in. You know you got some habits you shouldn't have. You know you got some stuff you got to get rid of, but you're still trying to hold on to it. And life is not getting any better. They, nevertheless, they wrote, therefore, verse 14, they cried out to the Lord and said, we pray, O Lord. <laughs> Listen to this. Look, look at this. I think this is funny. We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life and do not charge us with innocent blood see when they say don't charge us for innocent blood they have made a decision to do something <laughs> for you O Lord have done has it pleased you so they picked Jonah and threw him into the sea they picked that joker up he wouldn't jump off himself. They picked him up and threw him out. There's some people and some things and some habits and some practices that you got to get the guts and the courage to pick it up and throw it out of your life. I know y'all don't like this kind of preaching. Y'all don't want to hear this kind of message. Now you got to figure out what that is. You know what it is. You know what it is in your life that's keeping you from doing what God wants you to do. You know who it is. You know what it is. You know what it is you look at, what you read, what you listen to, where you hang out, what you like doing. That's keeping you from having the freedom to do what it is God's called you to do. And you're going to keep on having a perpetual storm in your life until you decide to grab that thing and throw it overboard. You got to grab it and get rid of it. Ain't nobody going to take it from you. It's not going to walk out on its own. You got to get rid of it. Look at your neighbor say you got to get rid of it. Tell your neighbor you got to get rid of it. Tell them on the other side you got to get rid of it. Tell them on both sides you got to get rid of it. Y'all not saying it. Y'all 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 not saying it. you got to you got to somebody holler out got to get rid of it. Got to get rid of it. Listen. Figure out. You know what it is. You ain't got to think about it. You know what it is. You know what's in your life that's keeping you from doing what God's called you to do. You know what it is. You don't, have to, you, don't have, you don't have to search hard for it. You don't have to look for it. It's right there. You know what it is. And it's keeping you. And it's putting you in turmoil. And you know what I love about this passage? It says right here, Ara. In verse 15, they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea. They got to a place where they could no longer tolerate him. They couldn't accept him being on there. It wasn't getting any better. They threw him out. And the sea ceased. You know what I know? God has the capacity to bring peace into your life instantly. Somebody say instantly. God has the capacity to bring peace into your life instantly. And that's what it says right here. And the sea ceased its raging. Then the men feared the Lord, verse 16, exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Even their lives got changed when they got rid of that joke off the boat. Now let me close this point. Let me close this phenomenal message. Y'all a little bit too slow. Took y'all about five minutes. Because I know this is for somebody. I know God's talking to somebody who's not in the right place, not doing the right thing. Verse 17 is my seventh and final point. 
God's second action. Here's my point. God's second action. What did he do? The Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. For three days and three nights, Jonah got thrown overboard, and there he is in the middle of the belly of a whale. It's dark, wet, slimy. It's not a pleasant place. But guess what? It's the safest place. Well, I know it's going to take you a minute to get that. It's going to take you a minute to get that. It's going to take you a couple of minutes. Because sometimes God's going to put you in a place that's not the most comfortable. It's not the place that you like. It's not where you want to be. But it's the safest place for you to be. Who? How you know it's so safe, Pastor? I know it's safe because God had prepared it for him. God already had prepared the whale to be there so that when he got thrown overboard, and see, y'all need to know, God's already orchestrating and getting ready to take care of you. He's already got the whale prepared. It's dark, it's nasty, it's ugly, but it's the safest place in the world. You know, it's much safer than being out there in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the sea. Matter of fact, he had that, that whale became... You know what it was? That whale was an Uber for him. Come on, talk to me for a second. It was there instantly. Y'all, excuse me what I'm saying. And picked him up into him exactly where he needed to be. Yes, sir. It's the first record of an Uber. Come on, it's in the Bible right there. God's got something prepared for you. If you could just jump out of whatever you're supposed, where you, where you ain't supposed to be, jump out. He got something waiting on you. That's going to take you where you need to be. He got something waiting for you. Somebody say hallelujah. He got something waiting on me. Hallelujah. Somebody say he got something waiting for me. I don't know who I'm preaching to today. All I know is that you're here today. All I know is that perhaps there's something going on. You Maybe you're in some place. Maybe there's some relationship, some habits, some whatever in your life that's not right. Jesus told me to tell you he loves you. He died on the cross for you. He gave up his life. He was buried and rose again, and he has life waiting for you. He doesn't want you to stay in that storm that you're in. He don't want you to be in that tempestuous situation. He wants to give you life. He wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. The best thing you can do is have the courage to get up and say, you know what, that's me. Let me get right with Jesus right now and make your way down here right now immediately this moment don't wait another day get up and come on and say yes to the Lord right now hallelujah it's the best choice best decision you'll ever make in life get on out get out come on come on now don't debate it don't reason that's right I see you coming praise the Lord that's right don't wait on nobody else you don't need anybody else's approval. Come on, right now, right today, right this moment. Right now, while he's waiting, come. Hallelujah. So proud of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. They're coming. They're coming. That's good. That's good. That's good. Praise the Lord.